What's going on, everyone? This is Low. Just want to jump straight into this. Want to thank uh, Sergeant Willie P, aka Sarge W P, aka Infinite Wisdom, for responding to a video that I did. Uh, he's one of my favorite YouTubers. Uh, I I don't really consider him a part of the Manosphere. Uh, some of his rhetoric does align with some of uh, our the MGTOW principles. Uh, some of them do not. But I just wanted to uh, thank him for responding. And he made a three part series called An Inconvenient Population that addresses his point of view on my, um, my prescription of applying MGTOW to the African American population. Now, some of the points I'm going to, oh, before I start, I'd like to say that. Sarge, you didn't have to make a three-part series. Well, not for me, because I would sit down and listen to some of your old videos while I'm like chopping up my food, making dinner. My roommate comes in like, what you listening to? I'm like, Sarge WP, turn it on. You know, even if you had those, four, I remember you had those 45-minute videos. <laughs> and I used, to listen, I used to listen to those. I mean, I would run or do my exercise. I would have that shit on when I'm going to the gym or whatever it is. But today I want to... I want to address some of the things that you said, Sarge. And before I address the things that you said, I just want to let you know I jotted down a few points. I didn't. I took some of the research that I've that I've already done, and some of the economic principles that I've already learned, and I've applied them. And then some of the points I'm going to make here, you might have to look up for yourself. So I just want to start off by saying in all practicality your idea of uh creating well i don't know much about captain solo i hear you mention him a lot um, i haven't i've yet to listen to any of his videos but you talk about um how african americans would be able to be reorganized and what it sounds like to me i, I don't i'm not sure if you're familiar with the the um the Parsley Massacre, and I'm not saying that you guys are going to massacre anyone, but your your theory, and, and just let me be clear on this, is to get African Americans <clears throat> to continuously to procreate with each other, and until they get darker and darker, um, uh, you would like you want you want to create a blackening, kind of like the uh, kind of like Trujillo did in the Dominican Republic when he wanted to whiten the country where he brought in more Europeans, I guess you would like to do the same thing with African Americans. You'd like to have them, you'd like to, I don't want to say breed them, but you want to have them, uh, yeah, breed for lack of a better word until they get darker and darker. Now, because now you did address, uh, you did, I, you did address mother nature and biological diversity and you addressed, you addressed also uh, social, uh, social appearance or what you look like to someone, uh, how you identify someone as a part of a tribe. And those two concepts lend credence to genotype versus phenotype. A genotype meaning what you actually are by virtue of your DNA. And phenotype is how you express that to the outside. Now, you go you're going to need in this nation, I believe, if you want to be logical, and once again, my name is Low Logical over, over Emotion, social things don't necessarily lead, social conventions do not necessarily lead to logical outcomes. I recommend if you're going to do this, I, you did mention something about um, African Americans that were 80% African um, or have 80% uh, African blood uh, would be able to contribute to this nation. Well, I would say if you're going to do this, if you're going to do this thing, if you're going to build this black nation, then you should have some kind of test, some kind of genetics test, whereby the only way a person would be admitted into your society is if they t get their blood drawn and it's determined that they're 80% sub-Saharan African. If not, then they will be ejected from your population because, as you mentioned in one of your videos, you said... You don't care where the mulattoes and the light skin or the two yellow would go. Now, once again, a mulatto 
is a logical conclusion. It entails having 50% European and 50% African heritage. But light skin, high yellow, we're dwelling in a little bit of um, a muddy water there simply because we don't know their genetic makeup. Maybe less than 80%. Uh, uh, less than 80%, greater than 50% uh, sub-Saharan African? I don't know. It's hard to look at someone and tell. So what kind of perplexed me is when you went at, when you made light of Brazil and how they were speaking Portuguese, the como bicycles, you know, like in the Portuguese, like they were like, vaja, force, vaja, or whatever. Like that was kind of cool. That was kind of funny. But they could make fun of us the way we speak English. You know how we sound to some people, right? But what I'm saying is that how are you going to knock Brazil's racial hierarchy? Or not hierarchy, excuse me. Let me rephrase that. I didn't mean to say it that way. Racial construct when Brazil has the largest population of Africans outside of Africa. If there was another place on earth to go, Besides Africa, where there are black people, then Brazil would be the second place. And once again, I know Africa is a continent, but you get my drift. All the sub-Saharan countries, Brazil has the most Africans, people of African descent outside of Africa. Now, Brazil's racial construct is one that's based on genotype and not on phenotype. And that's why when you were saying you saw the video and the woman didn't look uh, like she was black, it's because they can identify with the genetics of, I don't, I, now you're going to have to look this up, but the ge genetics on on the side of, of uh, I don't know if it's the, their mother's side, I don't remember exactly what side, but they get to, they, they get to look up their genetic tree and identify with who, what, what their ancestry is genetically by genotype. So because they identify by genotype does not make their construct or their paradigm any less viable than yours just because it's different. I mean, you, you apply tribalism and socialism, I mean, tribalism and social constructs phenotypically, meaning that when you referenced they don't trust light skin or mulattoes because they don't know where their allegiance lies simply because they're half and half and you know they go one place and the resources go somewhere else. I get the idea about resources and resource distribution. However, when we're talking about logic and we're talking about putting a system in place, you're going to need to have a system, a factual, a scientifically tested system in place in order to create this utopian nation that you suggest arise from the mixing and intermarrying of black folks that have 80% or more, which I have nothing against, 80% or more African blood. I've just, So I'm going to keep going back and forth because I jot down a couple things. Um, now, you talked about, <clears throat> and one of the most entertaining things I get out of your videos is when you say, People come together and form Voltron. Now, I'm an 80s baby, so, you know, I grew up watching Voltron, Transor Z, you know, um, Transformers. This this was the age of the the robots, that the toys that came together. And you talk about, what you talk about is uh, various factions that fight within one another that come together to fight what you call outsiders. So, what is perceived as an outsider changes as the scope changes. You, your example was uh, white people killing each other for centuries for power, but then when they want to uh, subjugate a minority group that they will put aside or create a, put a moratorium on their beef to join forces to attack a minority because they express a different phenotype. So I'm going to try to put your what you said into terms, scientific terms, if as much as possible. Two phenotypically 
different populations. I mean, excuse me, two, two phenotypically similar populations that have somewhat different genotypes would unite to go against a phenotypically different population with different genotypes. Now, while while the fight that you say, the fight that we, the, the race to survive, hence the word race, well, actually race, I believe, comes from raiz, which comes from the word root. This, this fight, this fight that you talk about um, between different ethnic groups, between different people of different regions, I mean, the fight will continue. And it doesn't matter what you do, there will always be a fight. So what is the real difference? What, what's the difference, Sarge? What's the difference if, if, I, go to, if I go down to the, the corner store and Don Travius pulls his nine millimeter on me and blows my brains out, or Officer Jim blows my brains out, the net result is I'm a dead mofo. I'm six feet under. So again, we're looking at the why. That's why when that's why there's this big thing about there's the Black Lives Matter and then there's the the black on black crime. Some people call it um, some people call it deflection. I see it as either you're alive or you're dead. The motivation behind the murder is simply an idea in someone's mind. The idea of your race or your ethnic group is an idea if it's not backed up with biological and genetic evidence. And if your criteria is 80% African ancestry, then I, then I can say, okay, I can agree with that. 80% or greater, I can agree with that. But there will always be beefs. Even in your nation, you're going to have people of different religions. You're going to have people from different regions. I mean, you got like, you got videos of guys from Detroit and guys from Chicago beefing over who's the king of the Midwest. I mean, until you can get rid of that bullshit. But then again, it's not really bullshit because people are tribal, right? So even if you have a nation of Africans outside of Africa, there's always going to be something else to beef over. And where does this innate need to beef come from, Sarge? It comes from the male need to reproduce and acquire resources to reproduce with the female. Hence, the problem of race stems from gender. Because you are created through sex. See, Sarge, Sarge, you see, I don't know if you're familiar with the late George Carlin. He was talking about how there was a Puerto Rican Day parade or Irish parade and things like that. And he says, I don't know why people say that they're proud to be a certain race when they didn't create that. He said, I take pride in something that I create. I'm just paraphrasing what he said. But basically, he says he takes pride in what something that he created. So the way you were born, Sarge, into this world, the way I was born into this world, I had no control over that. Two people bumped uglies. Somebody said, ah, 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 ooh. And then nine months later, a kicking, screaming baby came out. I had no control over who my mom let bust. I had no control over who my dad hollered at. That's why I say MGTOW is such a powerful ideology. Because one, it's based on something that there's no doubt you can, you can definitely tell if someone's a man or a woman. Either they have a penis or a vagina. And it's an ideology. I mean, it's a, excuse me, it's a philosophy that you can adopt if you choose to. Now, different people can take on a MGTOW philosophy. And just because someone takes on, now I'm, I'm now kind of going into where you address, where you, where you address and you went at MGTOW. And Sarge, MGTOW is simply a philosophy. 
it's in other people. There's some commenters that said that MGTOW is the white man's fight. It's like feminism. There's a, so many differences. I, I'm not sure if I can cover them all, but I can tell you that MGTOW is not political. Um, MGTOW is not, um, it doesn't, it's not, it's not in legislature. It's simply a philosophy that one can take on into their own lives. And if you look at, there's a, um, there's a YouTuber called Not Sure. And he talks about how before there was even a MGTOW movement, there was like a Detroit 300 men's group. African-American men were going their own way a long time before they, but they had nothing to call it. See, Sarge, you know why I say, you know how I say in some of my videos, MGTOW is my gang and male angst is my set. That's because when I, when I first started writing, when I first started writing my novel, um, I wrote a novel called Male Angst. Um, you can look it up. It's on Amazon. And I was going through, I was going through some changes and I was noticing the dynamics of male female relationships, but I didn't know what to call it. So I just called it male angst. I just was like, this is giving me, this is, this is some angst. I'm trying to, I'm trying to see what's going on. I mean, is Shorty going to get with the program? Um, I saw the disrespect from African American women. Um, I saw the, uh, what we call is, um, hypergamy. And here's another thing I want to get to, Sarge, because we, you talked about, you mentioned about how the first light skinned niggas and the light skinned bitches were created by whites. Some people say that they were, some people say that the white man purposely, uh, inseminated the African woman to create white supremacy. Some of your videos suggest that there was a master plan to thin the African race by busting nuts in the slaves. I don't agree. I think that the African Americans are the offspring of the lower class whites that raped and okay, so listen, here I think there's two ways this came about because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna actually negate the slave master sleeping with the slaves. And I'm also not going to get the, the lower class overseers raping the slaves too. Okay. And regardless of how it happened, technically, now I think I might have mentioned this in one of my videos. Technically, it is rape. Whether the master and a slave girl fall in love and have sex and have a children. Or the master forcefully takes the uh, African slave and has sex with her. Or one of the overseers, or that same thing happens with one of the overseers. The reason being is because with the institution of slavery, there was no way she could really technically say no. This is the same reason why uh, prisoners can't have sex uh, with the uh, um, correctional officers. Because that's considered rape, because they have charge over the prisoners. Even if they consent in their hearts, emotionally, technically, logically, based on law, it's not permitted and it's considered rape. Now, Sarge, I am a person, I don't know if this is the term called Occam's razor, and I use this to apply to a lot of things, but when there's the simplest explanation is usually the best one. I think that's what they say. And there could be rape. There, there was, there was rape. But Sarge, tell me if you think this is true, because you mentioned this about Queen. Uh, you mentioned in Alex Haley's Queen. You mentioned the dynamics of the house uh, negra, negress bedwinch, and uh, the field slave Negroes. Don't you think, Sarge, that in that those times there might have been an African slave woman that in her heart was in love or sexually attracted to her master because women are hypergamous and they simply they they attract to men in power. So and like I said, I cannot blame an individual for making a utility maximizing decision. If you're an African woman in slavery and the man in the big house is interested in you. You have nothing else going on. Why would you not? If you're attract, if the person is attracted. So what I'm saying is that, yes, the institution itself was not a humane institution, and I'm not gonna 
I'm not going to go into how how many populations had slavery. The United States was not the only place that had slaves. Slavery uh, is only different here because of the difference of, of color between the owners and the uh, the slaves. But there's still tribal differences regardless. But the bottom line is that slavery did occur. It was inhumane. I'm going to address that, get that out of the way. But don't you think that some of these women were hypergamous and wanted to sleep with their masters? Call it a case of Stockholm syndrome going awry. I don't know. I mean, that's something that you might want to put in your pipe and smoke. But then you talked about. And I'm trying to address the different points. You talked about how some of the ankh wearing uh, Hotep Negroes talk about going back to Africa. You also mentioned about James Monroe, and you also mentioned that it would have been a good idea that after slavery was over to send African Americans back to Africa. I am a living, breathing example of why that should not be. Why I disagree with much fervor. My father came from that country. Liberia that you mentioned. His tribe was a native tribe in Liberia. His, in, in, and, I, and, I, and his tribe was the tribe of the first native president, Samuel Doe. Name of the tribe is called Crown Tribe. The natives, even they had their, they had their different ethnic groups and things like that, they had a, stri a system, a structure. When the African Americans reached the shores of Liberia, the natives welcomed them. But the natives found that the African Americans would build a fence and they would build up the, they would build a fence around where they were living and the natives didn't they the natives they saw this and they were like what's wrong with them like you know we don't usually live like this. They built a fence around themselves. As soon as the African Americans touched African soil, they started that bullshit. There, like they said, like Will Smith said and Bad Boys, there go that, that that's that bullshit. And then what happened is the Africans, and they say that, well, you know, a lot of Liberians say, well, you know, Liberia, Liberia, Liberia was the first independent black nation. Well, technically, yes. But it wasn't made, it wasn't recognized as a nation created by the natives. It was a nation created by African Americans who went and enslaved Native Africans. Went and enslaved Native Africans after they, after they were enslaved by Europeans. They went and enslaved Native Africans. And Charles Taylor was an African American, African American, African. I don't know what the. We call them Conga people. He was the one who was responsible for massacring and killing Africans, Lib Liberians, and and they were so afraid of him. They had a they had a mad case. See, niggas have a bad case of Stockholm syndrome because they were carrying signs. He killed my ma. He killed my pa. I will vote for him. Charles Taylor for president. What's the common denominator here, Sarge? The African Americans saw that there was a system that they could that they could use that they could make work for them. Why? Because they were under it and they knew how efficient it was or inefficient it was. But regardless, they were willing to try it on the natives. So here we have a case of two populations that are phenotypically similar, slight differences in genotype since the African Americans that went to Liberia, a lot of them, like for example, I, um, I know this girl from, Af from Liberia and um, her ancestors were like from like Trinidad or something like that. Um, but they get back and they institute slavery. This is only an example of men lusting for power. And this to me is not really different 
in the abstract sense at its core from another light skin population coming in and taking or another ethnic group coming in and taking the fight is the fight what it is is that while we have these different phenotypes and these different genotypes genotypes we can't really we can't see readily without biological evidence the phenotypes we can see but one thing that can bind people and you mentioned this Sarge is culture a common language which is why in a lot of your videos you go at you go at um, um, Afro Latinas uh, Latinos and you talk about how they speak Spanish and how um, how if you you and a white girl from New Jersey named Becky or something like that uh, went to Africa that you that you that you um, say that you wouldn't have you would have less in common with her I, I disagree reason being is a culture is something that can be taken on a, a culture cultural norms and cultural ideals can be taken on by choice so if you Sarge let's say for example you are um, one one aspect of culture is music so let's say you're into rock and roll and there's a white dude that you know that's into rock and roll and then both of you go to a country where everything is classical music who would you vibe with more even though all the people that look like you listen to classical music why would who would you vibe with more you see me I will tell you straight up the person who is who is ideologically similar to me is the one the ideologically philosophically like-minded because the mind is something that you cannot control the mind is something that you that you as your your innate spirit controls your mind or your being or whatever it is whatever looks outside of your eyes you process what you see and you take on a you take on a program you take on an ideology and I profess that like-minded individuals would be the best in in nation building people with like minds not people with like phenotypes not people with like genotypes people that are like minded your argument about sending Africans Americans back to Africa that was a failure in Liberia and they've had war ever since and they're the poorest and they, you know what it's one thing you know you know you know what Liberia and Haiti have a lot in common because they were the first independent republics in their relative geographic regions but guess what they also have in common the colorism right and that bullshit that bullshit because when it comes down to it men will seize power and take advantage and as far as your as far as your idea of you know you so you have a, you and uh, this guy named cap have an idea about how you're going to create um a um, a black nation and there's this theory in economics and i forget exactly what it's called but imagine imagine three towns that live along a river and the river from town a to b to c the river goes downstream from town a down to town b down to town c the econ there's an economic theory and i forgot it, you know i learned this but it, the theory states that town a would not build a water treatment plant because the costs of treating the water would be the 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 cost of treating the water would not be borne by town b and c town a would have to bear all the costs of installing the plant yet town b and c would benefit from the fresh water that town a does to clean up the river now i forget exactly what it's called what this theory is called in economics but it goes to the point of your your nation building see in theory your nation building is good i have nothing against people building their own nation this is another form of going your own way by all means go your own way 
MGTOW. Negroes going their own way. I get it. I have no problem with it. Your criteria to get in your camp, 80% or greater African ancestry. I get it. But here's the thing. The initial costs of setting up that nation are very high because what you'd have to do is you'd have to get people to discipline themselves in a certain way that initially would be very costly. First of all, how are you going to wean? You, you're going to need, okay, you're going to need African American women that are 80% or more. Now, you also did say that you wanted to get some um, Haitians or some darker skin, even some Africans into the mix and um, and get them to be a part of this nation. But the question is, how are you going to accommodate their ideo ideological and cultural beliefs into your nation? You've just created factions. And how are you going to how are you going to get the African-American women to stop suckling from the teat of Uncle Sam? Why would LaShondra give up her job sitting in an air-conditioned room in a desk to go to some, I don't know, maybe the government would grant some land or something to go uh, use a hoe, pardon the pun, to dig up dirt to create, uh, to create little places where you could plant the seeds or to create some kind of... Um, um, aqueduct or something like that. Who would who is who is initially going to take the initial cost of living off the grid? MGTOW. Hello. See, Sarge, this is all everything you're saying about building a nation and going to do your own thing. These are MGTOW principles. Going your own way, doing your own thing, and I have nothing against that. It's but in my mind, ideologically, if that man shares that same idea as me. We're like minded and therefore we are a tribe and we choose that philosophy. This is why I don't knock Big Town. And every and yes, charge, I'm going to tell you, <laughs> there are some racist Big Town. There are some separatists. There are some white separatists Big Town. There's some white supremacists Big Town. There's a difference. But I'm going to tell you. That. If. Uh, if uh, Jeb up in the hills of of Kentucky wants to get some cocaine, but he don't like black folk, he sure is going to buy from Tyrone from Memphis. Why? Because you see, here's the thing, Sarge. Racism occurs in my mind along a spectrum, along a continuum. There are people that are supremacists and there are people that are separatists it's not the same thing i would classify you sarge in a, in, a, in a sense a black separatist there's nothing wrong with black separatism in an abstract sense there's nothing wrong with white se se excuse me separatism in an abstract sense there's nothing wrong with someone wanting to be with like like-minded like looking or whatever it is whatever you choose to do, there's nothing wrong with people choosing to do that. I don't see anything wrong with that. Where I, where I do see where I do see a problem is when it comes to trade. And I think this I'm starting to, and I don't want to digress too much, but I'm starting to creep into the Booker T. Washington versus W. E. B. Du Bois argument, whereas Booker T. was like, let's. We're we're in a we're in a uh, a nation of uh, segregation. We're in a nation of let's learn trades and let's make ourselves valuable as a people first. This is more like nation building. Let's build an economic power first, and then by the virtue of us being good tradesmen, right? Integration will come naturally through trade. So the guy might say, "Well, you know, I don't like niggers, but goddamn Tyrone's got the best." Goddamn fish scale I ever had. He's okay in my book. You know? And the black people, black people, it, it, Sarge, if you're building, if you're going to build a black nation, you have to take into consideration the number of black engineers that are going to help build, the number of black architects. You're going to need tradespeople. African Americans are, from what I've seen in my experience, are working mostly in service industries or industries that are uh, working in, in the cubes, uh, working those nine to fives, working at uh, fast food or whatever it is. There's 
tradesmen out there, but there's not a lot of them. You're going to you might need to you might need to when building this nation, you might need to um outsource. You might need to get someone to train you guys. If you're if you're a racist, you're not going to take I'm not saying you're racist, Sarge. I'm just saying that a person who is 100% racist would not take training from anywhere else but his own race. But you see, the thing about it is, is that some races have discovered the solutions to problems that other races haven't discovered. Like the army combatives come from forms of martial arts. So an absolute racist who was racist against those people would say, oh, that's a Chinese shit. I'm not going to learn karate. I'm not going to learn Brazilian jiu-jitsu because that shit comes from Japan and I don't like Japs. Like, you know what I'm saying? That is that is a futile way. See, through trade, this is how we learn these arts. Through trade. And I believe behind before our American... Our American... Um, the conundrum that we're in now... I believe that people were trading in ancient times, Africans, Asians. I believe they were all trading with each other and through trade in big trading places or big hubs like 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 the Persian area, the Egyptian area. You see a lot of mixture there. You see a lot of people of different shades there. As a matter of fact, I know this Chinese girl who her husband is Chinese and he recently found out that he has two percent African ancestry. He has two percent African sub-Saharan African blood. And I and I hypothesize that this could be as a result of the Silk Road. You know, someone with uh, African ancestry from Persia or something like that, Asia Minor, um, going to trade to China and meeting a Chinese woman or or whatever, what have you, uh, or a Chinese man taking um, you know, a woman that might have had some African blood. Regardless of the fact that trade, so people who trade. People who have an economic basis, and I think you did touch upon this, Sarge, about building first and then, um, and then you know, you know, quote unquote, hopping the fence, what you call it. But people have been hopping the fence, trading in their their proprietary patriarchies for centuries, for for millennia before the modern ages came about, and this is why you see the people in these areas looking um, like they have a mixture of blood. I know this video is long and I don't feel like breaking it into different sections, so I hope that you can listen through it. Um, but like I said, <clears throat> gender over race, simply because your race comes from the act of sex, and the act of sex comes from two genders, and the act of two genders getting together is a woman p picking a man based on the resources and other uh, and other attributes that show that he can be or show that he is at a level that she will feel comfortable bearing his offspring, biologically speaking. So that dance comes first, and this is why I say MGTOW all, all day. I think I covered the uh, you're 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 talking about the um, the Brazilians. I covered that. Um, also, when I said assimilation, I didn't mean lay down and let someone fuck you in the ass. I mean, what I meant was we share we share different commonalities and your 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 version of Trujillism and I and I and I used Trujillo 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 was like the Dominican version of Hitler. He was uh, a dude who wanted to um, cleanse the Dominican Republic of Haitians. Uh, you'd have to do your research on the intricate um, workings of the Dominican Republic in Haiti. But he had uh, there was the Perihil massacre where he would go through and he would ask people to pronounce. Yeah, he give he have a piece of parsley in his hand, and he'd go to people to dark skinned Dominicans and he would say, "What is this I have in my hand?" Like qué lo que es? And they would say, "Perihil." And if they could say Perihil. And roll their R, then they were not shot. But if they were like Pelwayhil, like you know how like French usually say a R that's kind of like W, so they might be like Pelwayhil. What do you say? Pelwayhil. Pow! He shot you. Parsley massacre. And then he brought in as many Germans and Italians and different people into the country. 
Now, I'm not saying that you're going to do that, Sarge. But what I'm saying is that his idea of whitening the Dominican Republic is the same idea of you darkening or trying to create a darker version. It's an ideology. It's an it's a uh, a racial uh, phenotypical ideology. And an ideology in its sense is not an ideology at its core is just an idea. What you do with it is what you do with it. So I'm not judging either way. And uh, your concept of blackness, I want to talk a little bit about that before I end this video. Blackness means different things to different people. I understand the yoke, the burden that African Americans have to live up to in this country. I understand that there are some sub optimal situations however I want you to go find me one place where people live where you won't see a dominant or subordinate ethnic group even in your proposed nation of 80 percent and above people of African descent a hierarchy will form another hierarchy will form and what will you do to quell the rebellion? You're gonna have to. You're gonna. Let's say a bunch of people jump on board. Okay, I can see Hotep Negroes jumping on board. I can see Israelites jumping on board. Right there, you have two conflicts. When you get the black Muslims and you have the Israelites, you have conflicts. You're gonna have Nation of Islam jumping on board, maybe. I'm trying to. I'm trying to imagine all the different factions. That would join your nation. You'd have you'd have some you might have some Africans that would join your nation. Some I think Haitians would join. Jamaicans, possibly. So you'd have a mixture. You might even have some Dominicans. You might even have some you might even have some Afro Latinos in there that might jump on board. But once you have all these people, now we have we have different religions. We have they're gonna have like people that are a vegetarian, people who are who eat meat. You have people that pray to different gods. You have people that, um, uh, you know, you have you have all these different things. So then you're gonna have to come up with a system to organize that because what's gonna happen is that like people are gonna bind together again, and like I said through ideology this is why the mind is the most important organ in the body next to the heart because it's the computer it's the mainframe there's nothing more powerful than a made-up mind and I've got my mind made up male angst why I cry MGTOW till I die.